new at this game. Buckman one step closer to the promised land. Aiken has survived again. Say hello to the November line. This is the greatest sport in the world. There can be only one. One person who is better at what they do than anyone who has ever walked the earth. One legend, one icon, one who is the greatest of all time. This is Poker's Pantheon. Tonight, the debate begins. Is he the one? Phil Ivey, he's great at cash games, online, and tournaments. No one else can say that. No one. Imagine the world's best poker player winning the world's biggest tournament. That's just awesome. I never thought I would see a pro win this tournament again. So if Phil does it, he may be the best player of all time. At age 32, Phil Ivey has already won seven bracelets. Now he has the chance to take down the big one to capture $8.5 million and to stake his claim that he is the best poker player who ever lived. This is the biggest moment of my career. You don't get too many opportunities like this. And if I play my game, I like my chances. Between Ivy and immortality stand eight men, each hoping to etch his name into poker history, including a poker veteran making a return trip to the final table. I've been here before. Now I want to win it all. A Wall Street executive looking for an unlikely payday. There's a reason I've made it this far, and there's no reason I can't go all the way. A young gun who could rewrite the record books. We're just a kid with a dream, and it may actually come true. And a mild-mannered logger who just happens to be the overwhelming chip leader. Ivy was incredible. Heck, all these guys can play, but I didn't come here to lose. The World Series of Poker main event final table. Nine men, the November nine. And if Ivy can beat them all, he may become the one. In the end, there will indeed be only one. But at the start of the day, thousands of fans lined up outside the Penn and Teller Theater at the Rio. Joey, Joey. Everyone came to cheer for their favorite player, and when the gates were finally opened, the anticipation grew. It's like a madhouse. Then it was time for the players to arrive and the festivities to get underway. He's ready. Welcome, everyone, to the World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. I'm Lon McCarran, along with Norman Chad, and this is the most anticipated final table in poker history. This is a ridiculous scene in here, Lon. Quite a long way from Fremont Street in the old days at the Horseshoe. And Poker's Elite are out en masse as well to watch this historic final table as the November 9 are getting ready to battle it out for Poker's biggest prize. This is the 40th annual World Series of Poker, and in that time, the main event has become a place of possibilities, the home to fairy tale endings and life-changing new beginnings. 6,494 players chased that elusive dream this year, and Norman, our final table is now set. Nine players who each embody this grand event in their own unique way. Lon, the main event is about the improbable. The main event is about the unimaginable. The main event is about Darwin Moon. We love to say anyone can win the big one. Well, in World Series history, is there anyone more unlikely than Darvin Moon? Most of me, of course, tonight will be rooting for my main man, Phil Ivey. But part of me will be rooting for the logger from Western Maryland to walk in from the woods and walk away with eight and a half million dollars. There is the World Championship bracelet. Now let's get to know the November 9. James Aikenhead hopes to become the first British-born player to win the main event, but the short stack owns only 4% of the chips in play. With 9.5 million is the other European at this table, Francis Antoine Saoud, whose first main event is translated into his first final table. Then there is my man, Phil Ivey. Even though he is short on chips, he is still the most feared player at this or any table. The oldest member of the November 9, 52-year-old Kevin Schaffel, has almost 12.4 million. 
Next is 21-year-old Joe Cata, who could break Peter Eastgate's record as the youngest main event champ. Jeff Shulman is making his second main event final table appearance. He's currently in fourth place with over 19 and a half million. Former Bear Stearns executive Steve Beglider is about eight million over chip average, while fellow New Yorker Eric Buckman is second in chips with nearly 35 million. But they're all chasing Darvin Moon. The logger from Maryland currently sits atop the leaderboard, holding 30% of the chips in play. Away we go. 6,494 began the main event. Nine remain. Tonight, eight and a half million dollars will be awarded along with the coveted gold bracelet. The blinds are 150 and 300,000 with a 40,000 chip ante. I don't know if it's the presence of Phil Ivey or the implausibility of Darvin Moon, but what a buzz this final table has created. Action folded over to Darvin Moon on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam Ace Tray Off Suit. Darvin has no credit card, no email address, no poker resume, but all eyes on the chip leader. He will limp in for 300000 James Aiken had the short stack at the table. Will not play to Phil Ivey, one of the short stacks with Jack Ten offsuit. And the small blind says he's just going to take it one hand at a time. Suddenly he's an NFL coach. Phil makes the call to Kevin Schaffel in the big blind with pocket nines. Schaffel, the oldest player here, just turned 52. With two limpers in front of you, you usually raise with the nines. However, the two limpers are the chip leader and Phil Ivey. Shaffle was one card from a day one bust out. River to full house, and here he is, a member of the November 9. A raise to 1.2 million. Back to Darvin Moon now. Before the final table, we saw Darvin play mostly premium hands. He's told some people he was going to sit tight here early. He's told others he's going to change it up. Let's see which Darvin shows up today. Raise. Well, Norman, here comes the Darvin changeup, making a raise with a pretty weak hand. Darvin makes it 3.3 million. Darvin's wife, Wendy, on the right, along with Darvin's mom and sister. Phil Ivey would have to put one-third of his remaining chips in. Phil lays down his jack-10 now to the pocket nines of Kevin Schaffel. Kevin brought about 100 people with him, the cheering section headed by his brother, Jordan. To call Moon's raise, Schaffel would need about one-third of his remaining chip stack. An early big decision for Kevin Schaffel. And he will lay that hand down to Darvin Moon. So Darvin is not going to sit on his big stack. He's going to be a bully with the big stack. Darvin was the definitive underdog in that hand, but forces out all comers, including Phil Ivey. So a new moon has come to Las Vegas this November. Darvin with almost 61 million. Let's take a look at the Full Tilt Poker.net final table ticker for the seat assignments. Darvin Moon in seat one. Phil Ivey in seat three, happy to have the big stack on his right. Shaffle and Beglider, who became friends here at the main event, are seated next to each other. Jeff Shulman is in seat nine, right next to the dealer, and Jeff looks down at pocket fives. Shulman joins Mike Matisseau and Dan Harrington as the only players to make the main event final table twice this decade. And with those pocket fives, Shulman with a raise to one and a quarter million. There's Phil Helmuth hired by Jeff to help him win the main event bracelet. Boy, I hope Jeff doesn't become poker brat two at the table. Next in line, Darvin Moon. Jack, six off suit. He will lay it down. Aikenhead gives it up now to Phil Ivey. Started this table with 5% of the chips only. Pocket kings for Ivey. Ivy prepared for this final table by going to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Every day he lifted weights, did cardio, yoga, and played some golf. Ivy taking it one hand at a time, and here's one hand that he can really take advantage of. I'm all in. Ivy is all in for almost 8.7 million. And up come the Humphreys, who made the trip here to Las Vegas for the championship table. Boy, they haven't stood up that quick since the Carter administration. <laughs> one step. Still action behind Phil. Well, with Shulman, maybe the tightest player here, raising from early position, the rest of the table knows Phil Ivey would not go all in without a monster hand. And the big blind pocket tense for Joe Cata. Cata and Ivey have battled before. This is a bad spot for pocket tens. It would be for most of Joe Cata's chips. 21-year-old from Shelby Township, Michigan, trying to become the youngest main event champ ever. Cata conflicted. He'd love to get rid of Ivey, but he'd hate to be the Schmeagel who doubles him up. Yeah, it's so close. And he mucks the tens. And now I can't imagine the pocket fives calling here. You need a crowbar to pry chips away from Jeff Shulman at this main event. What would Coach Helmuth do in this situation? Shulman does lay it down, and Phil Ivey will take that pot. Ivey up to 10.7 million. 
those very close hands there. That there's only a few that I can like have tough decisions with. And you probably know those few. Maybe I do. Joe wondering how good a read Phil had on him. You had a guess. What you had? I guess you had jacks. I don't know. Pretty good guess. Intense. So Phil Ivey gets a little stronger, and the message is clear. No one else at this final table wants to see this man with more chips. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Ling's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOPMobile.com. Get the WSOP Hold'em Legend Game for your phone or iPhone. And PokerStars.net, the world's largest poker site. Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event, final table. Welcome back to the Penn and Teller Theater at the Rio. Right now, let's take a look at our chip count brought to you by PokerStars.net. Darvin Moon remains in first place with a little over 60 million and 31% of the chips in play. Six players are under the chip average of 21.6 million, including Phil Ivey, who got a little richer, which got the attention of everyone at the table. But they should take solace in the fact that even though Phil may be the best player at the table, he still makes mistakes just like the rest of us. Smith and Ivy. Ivy with pocket eights and a flush draw. River card, ace of spades. Ivy with a check mark hitting his flush. I was watching it on my TiVo, and when I watched it, I just couldn't believe it. Smith shows his aces up. Ivy bucks his flush. He just bucked his hand. I was just stunned. I just couldn't believe it. So I rewinded it like 20 times. Phil, you had a flush. Five suited cards is a flush. I was like, I think they might have made a mistake. Phil, Ivy mucked the winner. But apparently, I guess you did. <laughs> so, so. It was really funny because I never looked back at my hand once. You know, I kind of just take for granted I know what I have because I placed you know, so many poker hands. I didn't look back at my hand. I didn't see four spades on the board. So, that's that. Phil, you misread your hand. You misread your hand. How could you misread your hand? I knew I was gonna get a hundred phone calls about my friends making fun of me. So I'm betting on you, you don't even know what hand you have. I am barring Phil from the big game for 30 days. Of course, if any one of my uh, poker buddies did that, I would be all over them. The rest of us sometimes misread our hands. Phil Ivey is not allowed to. Actually, I'm glad it happened because if I didn't throw away that hand, you know, I might not be here. Everything would be different. So uh, I learned from it. I'm glad it happened. But I look back at my hand now a couple times, especially before I throw my hand in. <laughs> I now believe Phil did that on purpose. It's all part of his master plan to psych everyone out, win the main event, and conquer the world. Action on the short stack. James Aikenhead, who along with Antoine Saoud, made the main event final table at the World Series of Poker Europe during the layoff. He's got king-queen offsuit. And that equaled Ivan Demidoff's Hold feat in. from last year. And Aikenhead moves all in for his last four million chips. And his rooting section on their feet. Phil Ivey, Jack Nine into the muck. Now two big stacks. Steve Beglider, the third biggest at the table with pocket tens. Beglider's three children, already poker savvy and his harshest critics. His 11-year-old son Aaron told him he wouldn't make it past day one. <laughs> Steve said that was a big motivator for him. I call. He makes the call. So James Aikenhead is at risk. And here's chairing section on pins and needles. 2008 November Niner Elon Schwartz has been advising Beglider recently. Steve's dad and wife are here also. So now the second biggest stack, Eric Buckman. Looks down at Ace King. Buckman didn't get a coach and decided to play less poker during the break. He said, practicing against strangers is not going to help me against these folks. Eric Buckman puts out a re-raise to 12.1 million, turning up the heat on Big Lighter. And with Buckman's re-raise, Aikenhead has to know he's in big trouble. If British poker fans are anything like soccer fans, I wouldn't want to be the guy to knock out Aikenhead. Buckman's brother and parents watching this drama unfold. Action back to Big Lighter now. Beglider with the best hand, but is he willing to risk a chunk of his chips with pocket tens? He is not. He lays it down. So Aikenhead against Buckman, King Queen against Ace King. Buckman has Aikenhead dominated. Aikenhead is all in. Beglider sees now he had the best of it pre-flop. I need a queen. King Queen. King Queen. Aikenhead finished ninth at the World Series Europe, trying to avoid that fate here. The English always love the queen. 
<laughs> Aiken had at risk, a three to one dog to Eric Buckman. Now the flop with our first November Niner at risk. It is deuce trade Jack. Nothing in there for Aikenhead. Good news for Eric Buckman. He's in a much more dominant position. Aikenhead now will need runner runner for a straight or that queen to stick around. Turn card is a king that pairs both and Aikenhead down to perhaps his last card. That king makes no difference to Aikenhead. He still needs a queen. No card here, no queen. No queen. Buckman's family hoping for anything but a queen. Aikenhead came here as the short stack. He and his mates hoping he can survive and triple up. Aikenhead needs a queen or he is bamboozled. The river card. Oh, is the queen! Aikenhead triples up. And Eric Buckman has an Aikenhead. What a card for James Aikenhead. <laughs> Aikenhead now working with almost 13 million. Buckman has told us people always suck out on him. He knows of what he speaks. And James Aikenhead is the latest to do it to him. And that win keeps Aikenhead's eight and a half million dollar dream alive at this championship table. It's time for Straight from the Pros, brought to you by PokerStars.net. On his way to becoming the 2003 main event champion, Chris Moneymaker first had to deal with two-time champ Johnny Chan. I didn't play many pots because he was re-raising me and he was he was abusing me. But I got into a position where I had a suited ace on the button. It was a good chance to take down the blinds in position. So I raised the button and he flat calls. And this is a good flop for Moneymaker. A dream flop for me. He checked to me and I bet and then he raises. Come on. Chris Moneymaker laying down the challenge to Johnny Chan. I'm like, wow, how did I get mixed up with Johnny Chan in this big of a pot? You know, I had no intention of doing this. I'm praying he folds. All right, we got it, we got it. I'm like, oh. all right, I guess I got to get lucky. I need a heart, dealer. I thought I was dead in the hand. I thought he had a bigger ace than me. Oh, yeah, man, in bad shape. And he flips up his hand, I'm like, oh, what, what, what just happened here? I realized at this point, I caught his hand in the cookie jar. Chris Moneymaker takes down Johnny Chan. It was a nice feeling getting Johnny Chan off my left and gave me confidence that if I can beat Johnny Chan, I can beat anybody. You know, no one else scares me. Welcome back to the Rio, where all eyes remain on the short stacked Phil Ivey. Ivey can be patient for the moment, but he's going to need cards soon to chip up. Owning just 5% of the chips on the table, Ivey hoping to take a page from Jerry Yang's playbook, who won the main event after starting with just 6% of the chips in play. Antoine Saoud looks down at Jack Deuce offsuit. Like Darwin Moon, the main event was Antoine's first time in Las Vegas. He's going to raise it up to 850,000 chips. Looks like the Frenchman is going to try what we call le bluff. <laughs> Shulman lays it down. Over to seat one and Darvin Moon in the small blind. Ace four offsuit. Darvin unsponsored, unfettered, unaffected, unspoiled, and the only one in short sleeves. <laughs> he makes the call for 700,000. The big blind Aiken head gets out of the way. So Saut and Moon will see a flop. Flop is King Jack Deuce out with Jacks up, giving him a huge advantage. Well, that hand went from Le Bluff to Le Nuts. <laughs> we saw Darvin play bully with Ace Trey earlier. Now it looks like he might be getting frisky with Ace Four. He's going to bet 2.3 million. Again, this is a new Darvin Moon, new but maybe not improved. Saud with two pair and a raise to 6.75 million. And that should shut it down for Darvin Moon, who tried to buy this pot on the flop. Darvin's family seems to understand the gravity of this moment. All in. All in from Darvin, enough to put Saud at risk, and he calls immediately. I doubled him up. I doubled him up. That's a hiccup from Darvin, but one hiccup can lead to a case of hiccups. Saud in terrific shape to double up and do it through the chip leader. Camp Moon not happy. Antoine's sister, Natalie, part of a large French contingent, many of whom filling the upper seats of the Penn and Teller Theater. Not the two hands I expected. Darwin's <laughs> gone from premium hands to junk hands. I messed up there big time. So are you still got plenty? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I just figured if he's that strong, he'd have pushed all in over me. 
I'm not sure Phil is agreeing with Darvin or, or just trying to move the conversation along. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Wendy Moon doesn't look all right at the moment. All right, Saoud trying to double up. Here's the turn card. Trey of Diamonds. Moon with a wheel draw. That's Darvin for you. The way Darvin usually runs, everyone in the wheel must think a five is coming. <laughs> Wendy calling for a five. Antoine Saoud needs to avoid a sink or he will be le wambuzzled. The river is another deuce. Saoud seals the win with a river full house to double up to almost 22 million. And the logger from Western Maryland takes a small misstep. Nobody ready to exit this final table just yet. Darvin needs to clear his head and gather his thoughts after that hand, but that shouldn't be too hard for him considering that's pretty much how he prepared for the final table. Either you're going to get good cards and you're going to win, or you're not going to get good cards and they're going to win. I had to nuts. Did I hire a coach? No. You can't have somebody teach you something that these guys have done their whole life. Instead, I went to Wyoming, me and four other guys, 35 miles up in the mountains away from everything. The phones don't work, no electric, no water. They all went hunting. Well, I took my gun out every day and went out in the woods, but um, I found me a nice, comfortable place and laid down and took a nap. You can't see anything to shoot if you have your eyes closed. So I just get everything else out of my mind and focus directly on cards. We play cards in the cabin every night. We just rag on each other, tell each other, you know, you're terrible. Get up the next morning, do it all over. It was good to get away, get your head clear, mentally prepared. I've played every hand I've played in this WSOP back through my head. I'm new at this game. It still hasn't sunk in where I'm at. This is a fairy tale here. It's oh, really? better run that's unreal. Whatever happens, happens. I'd be happy living up in that little one-room cabin with no electric, no water, no nothing. It's just my lifestyle. No electric and no water at that cabin in Wyoming, and the outhouse is 100 yards away. Boy, you've got to be really pot committed there. <laughs> Norman, this is your last shot of the season. It's time for the final table version of the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Wild Card Hand, where you and the folks at home try to figure out one player's hole cards. Today, I will redeem myself for a lifetime of bad judgments. <laughs> All right, so it is folded over to Joe Catta. 21-year-old has the wild card hand. In the cutoff position, Kata with a raise to one million. Well, in the cutoff, he could be stealing here, but his body language tells me he has a strong ace. That's Joe's girlfriend, Elena. Shulman folds over to Darvin Moon, the chip leader. In the big blind, Darvin with ace 10 off suit. When he watched himself on TV, Darvin said he was ashamed at how many tells he had and vowed to fix that weakness. He calls for 600000 Well, I'm watching Darvin on TV now and just calling with that semi-strong ace. Usually it's a good spot to raise, but he's going to play it Western Maryland style. The flop is 4-8-9, a couple of clubs, and we know that misses Darvin with his ace high. And I also think it missed the 21-year-old. I still have him on a big ace. So we're looking at a good old-fashioned Michigan versus Maryland ace-off. Darvin Moon with the check. And let's see if Kata is in the mood for a continuation bet. Nope, just a continuation check if there were such a thing. Well, he is still staring at the big stack, so he doesn't want to put any more chips at risk at the moment. All right, turn card is an ace. Moon with the pair of aces. And Joe Kata with the pair of aces. They both hit their ace. Darvin checks his top pair. Darvin might be cagey there, hoping that Kata bets. But Kata has an ace. Kata. Bet's like he's got an ace, 1.4 million. Darvin knows Kata could be making a semi-bluff here. It's possible he's on a flush or straight draw. I gotta believe Darvin thinks his ace is best. He's got a pair of aces with a decent kicker. Does Darvin want to come over the top, as we have seen him do numerous times? Nope, just a call. He could be trying to induce a bluff from Joe Kata on the river if Joe's got nothing. River card. Is another four. Moon with the aces up. And according to you, Kata with aces up. So is it coming down to the kicker, Norman? Yeah, Kata's got the better kicker. I think he's got a stronger ace than Darvin Moon. Darvin putting some chips together. Five and a half million in the pot. Darvin bets two and a half million. And Darvin likes his aces up. But I think Kata's got the better hand. He's got that Jake LaMotta look to him. And he's going to fight back with a big raise. <laughs> Darvin Moon trying to take a bite out of young Joe Catastack. 
Five and a half million. Kata comes back over the top, a raise to five and a half million. What did I tell you? I had this hand cased. Kata's got the better hand. Darvin probably knows at this point that his ace is up on any good. Three million to Moon. Darvin Moon ought to be careful right here. Trying to get a read on Joe Kata. Oh. A call from Moon. He disagrees with me. Darvin Moon shows his ace is up. Joe Cata, what do you got? Oh, I don't like Joe's look there. Six tray of clubs? Well, I believe I got the first one of the year wrong, the last one of the year wrong, and most of them in between wrong. I'm consistent. So Joe Cata bluffs off almost eight million very critical chips and loses the Jack Link's beef jerky wild card hand. Kid, you let me down there, and Darvin again is smarter than he likes to let on. And that smart call extends Darvin's chip lead. Kevin Schaffel has moved up to sixth place. Phil Ivey's right behind him in seventh, while James Aikenhead has fallen on hard times and is once again the short stack. At this championship table, three players are in their 20s, three in their 30s, three are over 40, so it's not just young guns here. 46-year-old Darvin Moon folds over to James Aikenhead, 20 years his junior with pocket trays. Aikenhead, a member of the hit squad poker team before the final table. He prepared by going to Thailand with his buddies and relaxing on the beach. With pocket trays, Aikenhead will move in for about four and a half million chips. And his buddies look like they could use some more beach time. <laughs> Action on Phil Ivey. Phil looks down at King Six of Hearts. A man's got to get something going, but King Six of Hearts isn't going to do it. So Kevin Schaffel now with pocket nines. Schaffel is a scratch golfer. He says he's going for the double. He wants to win the main event and the U.S. Senior Amateur. I call. Schaffel makes the call with his nines. Aikenhead once again at risk. He survived once before. Eggliner gives up his button. Buckman's in the small blind. He folds. Kata in the big blind. Gives it up. So Aikenhead will try to survive his all-in against Kevin Schaffel. Aikenhead second at a World Series final table last year when he got unlucky. Now hoping to get lucky for the second time tonight to keep his main event hopes alive. Kevin's brother Jordan and the rest of the Schaffel up and deal group on their feet. The ocean is gone. Come on, son. Aikenhead looking for any support he can get. The flop is 10 to 7, and that's pretty much all blanks for Aikenhead. Aikenhead now has to hope to make a backdoor flush or hit a three. James had premonitions about his main event success, but doesn't look like he's feeling it here. The turn card now is another deuce. Aikenhead thought he had it. Shaffle was squirming. It was Shaffle and Aikenhead looking at each other, breaking up the tension. Aikenhead down to his last card. He needs a three or he's going home. The river card is a nine. And with a full house, Kevin Schaffel makes James Aikenhead our first player eliminated from this championship table. And a great double for Aikenhead. Ninth in the World Series Europe main event and ninth in the main event here. Kevin Schaffel being mobbed by his supporters. James Aikenhead being consoled by his ninth place worth almost $1.3 million. A valiant run at the 2009 main event has come to an end for James Aikenhead, and the November 9 is now down to eight. You saw the championship banners that were hanging inside the Rio poker room. One of our remaining eight players will soon join that elite group. Maybe Kevin Schaffel, who woke up with aces. He's up against the pocket kings of Eric Buckman, who is contemplating a call of ten and a half million. Buckman had re-raised Schaffel, and now Schaffel has four bet it. But I don't see how Eric okay. Buckman can say bye-bye to pocket kings here. I call. He does make the call. I call. And Buckman hates to see the aces. Aces king. The Shaffle crowd loves this matchup. The Buckman family not so happy. Eric Buckman stands to lose half his stack here, and Kevin Shaffle is poised to move up to second on the leaderboard. All right, here's the flop. Oh, and there's a king for Eric Buckman. And Kevin Schaffel just went from the best of hands to the worst of luck. Schaffel's ace is now looking for a lifeline. 
Buckman looking for the knockout. Schaffel can still make a straight with a 10 or he needs an ace. Otherwise, he will be gone. Schaffel understands just how thin he's drawing. The turn card. Oh! Schaffel in eighth place. Kevin gets a hug from his friend on the way out. Schaffel's group is stunned in the upper reaches of the Penn and Teller Theater, and Jordan Schaffel can't believe his brother's aces were cracked. Eric Buckman likes to complain that people suck out on him. Well, he can put that complaint to rest. He's running lucky. <laughs> Kevin Schaffel earns $1.3 million for his eighth place finish. Eric Buckman stacked balloons to almost $52 million. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. But that's not how I wanted to go out. To the victor go the spoils, and Buckman now finds himself in second place. Darvin Moon's once dominant chip lead is being threatened. Meanwhile, Phil Ivey's still near the bottom, looking up. Joe Cata is the short stack. Back to action on chip leader Darvin Moon on the Jackling Speed Jerky Pocket Cam. He has King Queen offsuit. Darwin from Oakland, Maryland, population 1,900, or fewer people than Darwin played against here on day one. A raise to 1.3, Ivy folds. Ivy leans back, apparently a little frustrated with the cards he's been getting. Steve Beglider with ace, queen of spades. Beglider's wearing the same shirt, same pants, same hat as he did earlier in the main event. He says, respect the streak. Before this final table, he says he never played a hand against Darwin Moon, but he's going to raise the chip leader to 3.9 million. Big Lighter says he's a big Darwin Moon fan and that Darwin is a better player than Darwin advertises. Fold it over to Jeff Schulman. Schulman will lay it down. So the re raise back to Darwin Moon. And he makes the call for 2.6 million more. So finally, Wall Street against the Woodsman. All right, the flop now. Trey for Deuce Big Lighter with flush and straight draws. And the flop completely misses Darvin Moon. And Moon will check. Big Lighter reaching for chips right away. And he will bet 5.35 million. That's a big bet, particularly in this economy. Steve's wife, Karen, sees her husband getting into a big hand. Darvin completely missed the flop, but it looks like he might have missed the memo that he's supposed to fault. I think you're right, Norman. He's eyeing his chips. And now Darvin Moon with those big logger paws raises the action to 15 million. Boy, Darvin Moon's gone hunting here without a rifle. Karen Beglider feeling the heat too as this pot builds to near 30 million. You know, now might not be the best time for a Kodak moment. <laughs> Steve Beglider with a huge drawing hand here facing Darvin Moon's big raise. A critical moment for Beglider with those draws, but still just with ace high, jousting with the man who's been running red hot at the main event. I'm all in. And Beglider comes over the top, all in. Elon Schwartz hoping Steve is doing the right thing here. Come on, Steven. Come on, Steven. Wow. Wow is Western Maryland for mm. I'm in deep doo-doo. Darvin Moon has dug himself a huge hole. His big raise was his big mistake here. It don't matter how much it is, either I'm calling or I'm not. Darvin's getting seven and a half to one on a call here. You think he has to call, but he's got nuclear squad douche and improbably the pot odds are against him. On the other hand, Darvin needs just 14% of his stack to call here and he'd have a chance to knock off a player. Quite a pickle. Darvin's really not a math guy. If he feels he's beat, he's beat. Good and he job. will lay this down. Steve Beglider takes that pot. Steve Beglider with almost 45 million chips. And with Darvin Moon giving away 19 million, Eric Buckman is now the final table chip leader. And Steve Beglider and his family have good reason to celebrate. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event, final table. Welcome back to the Rio, where Steve Beglider must be feeling good after taking a big chunk of Darvin Moon stack. Right now, action is on Jeff Shulman, who looks down at pocket nines. Shulman said his final table approach would be avoid making mistakes and don't open up until four-handed, and indeed, he's played very snug. A raise to one and a half million. 
with his pocket nines. Ivy now with King Queen offsuit in the big blind. Barry Greenstein said he didn't think Phil would ever get this good, but credits him for spending a couple of years on the internet and proving his shorthanded game and his hold'em game. Come on, man. All in from Phil Ivy. That's for about eight and a half million total. Ivy with a precarious all-in. He might read Schulman's hand as weak, or he might figure Schulman doesn't want to play a big pot here. The Humphreys are concerned. Mel with his fingers crossed for good luck. Bill Helmuth hoping his charge makes the correct decision. If Schulman calls here, Ivy will be an underdog for his main event life. Frankly, I'm getting a bit scared. This isn't the way I saw things playing out. This would be for about half of Jeff Schulman's remaining chips. If Schulman had raised from early position, I don't think Ivy makes this move, but he doesn't think Schulman's hand is as strong raising from the button. And Schulman will lay it down to fill Ivy's pressure. And a sigh of relief from Ivy's most loyal fans. I guess Coach Halmuth's no Vince Lombardi. Schulman decides to wait for a better spot. Chips are power here, and my main man has been powerless at this final table. He gets a few more right there. Any pot Ivy wins is scary for the rest of the table. You always hear how Phil is a closer. Take a look at these stats. When he makes a World Series final table, he wins the bracelet 35% of the time. And watch out if he gets heads up because he's batting 700. All right, action on Steve Beglider with pocket sevens. There once was a moneymaker effect. Steve thinks his success might lead to a Beglider effect. Everyone in Chappaqua, New York, wants to get good at poker. Raised to one and a quarter million. The blinds are up to 250 and 500,000 with a 50,000 chip ante. Jeff Schulman lays it down. Darvin Moon will not play this hand. So in the big blind, Phil Ivey with ace nine of diamonds. Phil used to have a small journal he'd fill with strategy and player observations, but he lost that journal, so now he just has a mental notebook. Ivy makes the call to go heads up with Steve Beglider. The flop is all paint, queen, jack, king. Ivy with flush and straight draws is favored. Beglider still with the best hand with his sevens. You see the percentages, great for Ivy, but he will check right here and respect Beglider's pre-flop under the gun raise. On playing Phil Ivy, Beglider said, okay, Phil knows what he has, Phil knows what I have. I only know what I have. This is not a good situation for me. <laughs> Beglider bets one and three quarter million. I'd love Phil to check raise here, but that's risky business with his chip stack. No check raise from Phil, just a call, and he'll pay to try to hit his draws. All right, the turn card now. It's a jack. Well, now a king or a queen would also give Ivy two pair with a better kicker, but Beglider's jacks and sevens continue to lead. Ivy checks again. Ivy hasn't made a hand yet, trying to keep the pot small. Beglider will give Ivy a free river card. Phil trying to find some way to win this pot. River card is a tray of hearts. Ivy misses all his draws. Beglider gets the check mark. Phil Ivy cannot win this pot unless he bets at it. Mel Humphreys with the fingers crossed. Of course, Phil here can just check, concede the pot, and play for another one. 6.6 .6 million in the pot, and Ivy's going to bet at it. Two and a half million. A bluff disguised as a value bet by Phil Ivy. Let's see if the amateur can sniff it out. Phil told us much of his success comes because he has a good feel for what people are thinking. Beglider sees a lot of overcards out there and Phil Ivey betting into him, and Beglider lays down the best hand. I'm starting to get that loving Phil Ivey feeling <laughs> back, Lon. The crowd loves to see Ivey take in that pot. And Beglider can't stand to watch Ivy stacking his winnings and wonders if he was had. And remember, no established pro has won this main event since 2001. Carlos Mortensen, it looks like my man Phil could be making his move. Climbing the ladder pretty good, Phil. It's a long ladder. It may be a long ladder, sure. But if you're Phil Ivy, no climb is too high. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event, final table. Welcome back inside the Rio and the Pack Penn and Teller Theater.
The room's still filled with anticipation. Everyone watching and wondering, can Phil Ivey pull it off? He's now over 16 million, thanks to a couple of recent hands, and pocket jacks could help keep the momentum going. Ivy will make a raise to one and a quarter million. Phil tied with Billy Baxter for sixth on the all-time World Series bracelet list. Baxter won all his bracelets in low ball. Phil has never won a Holden bracelet. Folded to Antoine Saut. Pocket sevens for the Frenchman. On the button. Saut. Faced with a raise from Phil Ivy. And now Saut comes back with a re-raise to just over four million. Boy, Ivy raised under the gun. It's rare to see someone then three bet him. Saut signaling he's got a big hand, but you know he doesn't. So back to Ivy now. Needs almost three million to call. And Norman, he's working with pocket jacks. You know how I feel about pocket jacks. Pocket jacks always tricky to play. Saud is pretty tight, and he's made his mark in the poker world very quickly. And right now, he's putting a lot of pressure on Phil's smaller stack. Phil trying to get a read on the Frenchman. Oh, Phil will get a read on him. Oh, no. Ivy mucks the pocket jacks, and Saud will take that pot. Ivy with the misread. Apparently, jacks act as kryptonite to block my man's reading ability. Wow. Phil prides himself on his reads, but maybe something got lost in translation. I love Cassoulet. And his fourth deep main event run and first final table, Phil finding the road a little rougher than expected. He's down to 15 million chips and in fifth place. Saud in fourth place, Buckman atop the leaderboard. Darwin Moon with a slight advantage over Beglider. Jeff Schulman, the short stack. Joe Catta still alive in his pursuit to become the youngest ever main event champion. He looks down at Ace Jack off suit. Cato with a similar playing style to Peter Eastgate, both pretty aggressive. A raise to one and a quarter million from the 21-year-old. Saud lays it down to Jeff Shulman with Ace King off suit. On. Shulman, the short stack moves all in for just over seven million. Shulman has played very few pots today. Ivy folds King Queen. Beglider folds. Buckman yeah, lays it down. Now Cata asks for an exact count. I've got five words for Joe Cata. Fold it and fold it now. Actually, that's six words. <laughs> same, same thing. You were never good with numbers. Jeff's dad, Barry Shulman, right there, fresh off his World Series of Poker Europe main event victory. Jeff Shulman would be at risk here if Cata calls. If Cata calls here and loses, he would be crippled. I call. He does make the call with Ace Jack, and Shulman shows the Ace King. Cata rather pained with his version of the Peter Eastgate face. <laughs> Shulman with a great chance to put a hurt on Cata's chances at making poker history. And as the hands are opened up, everyone sees what Cata needs. Joe's mom, Ann, in the background feeling the pain of her son. Jack! Cata trying to beat Eastgate's record, and he's got that Eastgate face down. Shulman in great shape to double up, but still at risk of elimination. The flop is Trey, 10-9. Cata comes up short. Ace King off in the last hand a player sees, but Shulman now in good position to double up against Joe Cata. The turn card is a queen, and both players pick up straight draws. Joe's is open-ended. Jeff's is a gut shot. Shulman trying to avoid going out seventh, just as he did in the 2000 main event. Phil Helmuth explaining to Team Shulman how good of a coach he is. Jeff Shulman all in. Joe Cata in for almost all of his chips. Cata needs a king or an eight to eliminate Shulman. The river card is a four of diamond. Shulman will win the hand and double up. Shulman doesn't look happy, but he should be. Cata devastated, down under three million chips. There is no joy in Cata Town. The 21-year-old is left with only five big blinds, and his chance at poker history is on life support. The veteran Jeff Shulman has once again climbed over 15 million, and his quest to one-up his dad and win poker's biggest prize is still alive. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Lee's Beef Jerky. Main event, final table. 
Welcome back to the Rio and the Penn & Teller Theater. As you can see on the PokerStars.net chip count, Eric Buckman is on top. Jeff Shulman is nearing $15 million, just behind Phil Ivey, but ahead of Joe Cata, who's doubled up since being crippled. Cata still the short stack. On the Jack Link's beef jerky pocket cam, Shulman looks down at 6-5 offsuit. Shulman has mucked a lot of hands. He's been playing it very close to the vest. Folded to Phil Ivey, who started this final table with almost 10 million chips. He's up to 15 million now. He has ace eight offsuit. Ivey has been almost as patient as Jeff Shulman. A raise to one and a quarter million from Ivey. <laughs> so that time to play aggressive. Meg Leiter lays it down, as does Buckman. Now on 21 year old Joe Cata with pocket fours. In the small blind. Joe Cata short stacked. All in. All right. And it is time to get aggressive for Cata. All in with those fours. This would cost Ivy about one third of his chip stack. Ivy with ace eight. Ivy wondering if Cata has a big pair or a better ace. His final table moments becoming more dramatic with every passing hand. Ivy getting almost two to one on a call here. It might be time for him to gamble. Phil commits the chips. A crossroads moment for Ivy and Cata. Cata, of course, can be knocked out. Ivy can pick up some valuable chips, or he'll be back down under 20 big blinds. You're one sick puppy. Huh? You're sick. How, how, how could I fold? Yeah, I know. I was wondering where you took so long. I was trying to figure out a way to fold. I a reluctant call from Ivy, who's in danger of being bounced back to his starting stack. If Cata loses his hand, Peter Eastgate's year-old record as youngest main event champ ever will stand. Here we go to the flop, Cata at risk. Deuce 10 tray, Cata's pocket fours hold up through the flop. Neither player had been all in and called prior to the final table at this main event. This is a crucial race and Cata is winning it at the moment. Phil Ivey trying to find some way to knock off the young Joe Cata. The turn card is a nine, that won't do it. Ivy still trailing. Cata bobbing and weaving like a boxer trying to avoid the knockout punch. What a moment this championship table has come down to for these two strong players. Cata trying to hang on. Ivy trying to pick up some steam. Ivy looking for help. And Phil Ivy needs an ace or an eight to end Joe Cata's bid to become youngest main event champ ever. The river card is a seven. Joe Cata doubles up. He's up to over 12 million chips. Back in. Nice. 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 And another big blow from a main man, Phil Ivey. Don't worry about it. It's just a bump in the road. And a bump in the road just knocked Phil under 10 million chips and sent the Cata contingent into a frenzy. Cata doing pretty good considering a short while ago he had just under 3 million chips. And for Ivey, it's back to work. Back to action. The blinds are up to 300 and 600,000 with a 75,000 chip ante. Phil Ivey with Jack of Diamonds and Queen of Hearts. And he'll lay those down. Action on Steve Beglider. Eight, seven of clubs. Most of Beglider's home poker league is here. Steve told them, you give me no advice, I'll provide better snacks for our game. A raise to one and a half million from Beglider. Folded over to Frenchman Antoine Saoud in the small blind with ace king suited. Last summer, Saoud worked loading newspapers into a delivery truck. After three months of that, poker looked real good. Saoud might be in the headlines of those newspapers if he wins this tournament. A raise to four and a half million. Back to Beglider now. Who had raised under the gun. He needs three million to call and makes the call. Now we know Beglider likes to defend his blind. Here, I guess he's just going to defend his honor. Saud and Beglider will see a flop. It is eight tray nine, two hearts. Beglider with the best hand with a pair of eights. Saud with two overs and the nut flush draw. If both players get their hands into the thick of that flop. Antoine checks. Beglider with middle pair now. It's a good looking flop for Beglider, particularly if he puts Saud on a couple of big cards. And he does bet it 6.3 million. Saud now with a big drawing hand. Harden. Announces all in. Well, I'm sure Beglider remembers Saud's all in bluff with ace queen after Antoine missed the flop on day eight. Beglider getting great odds to call here. 37 million in the middle, and he just needs to put in another 15. I think I priced myself into this. 
They call. Baglider makes the call to put Saud at risk. A coin flip with huge implications. Whoever wins becomes the chip leader. If Antoine Saud loses, he is out of here. So what a showdown between the amateur Beglider and the young pro Antoine Saud, who just took up this game seriously about a year ago. Saud finished seventh at the World Series of Poker Europe main event, trying to avoid that same fate here. They are fighting for the biggest pot of the main event. The turn card is a heart. Saud turns the flush. And he is our new chip leader. And a bitter pill for Steve Beglider to swallow. Antoine Saud with almost 53 million chips and a chance to be the first French world champion. Beglider goes from one of the big stacks to one of the small ones. I haven't seen the French celebrate like this since McDonald's came to Paris. Antoine Saud started as one of the short stacks, now in great shape to claim this huge prize. Now for Deal Me In, brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. In 2008, Mike Matisseau was trying to make yet another run at the final table when he found himself in a dangerous hand against Greg Geller. I had been playing with him all day, and when the guy re-raised me, I thought he had a big pair, like jacks, maybe even queens, and I called. Flop is four, king six. When the king came on the flop being checked, I knew he had like jacks, and I'd been playing so solid, but I just went all in. Come on. This is either a brilliant, gutsy play, or it's, ladies and gentlemen, live from Las Vegas, Nevada, the Mike Mattisau Blower! I don't like putting my tournament life on the line, but my gut feeling said pull the trigger and... He folds and Mattisau's bluff works! That's right, baby. Don't worry. That's a steal! The style wasn't raised in check. It was something that he did different, so I just went with it. He folded and that propelled me all the way to almost winning the tournament. Welcome back inside the Rio and the Penn & Teller Theater. Mike Matisseau, who has made two main event final tables here, watching to see who will prove victorious at this one. Right now, Antoine Saoud leading the way. Eric Buckman very close behind. Former chip leader Darvin Moon in third. And Norman, I know you hate to hear this, but Phil Ivey, your guy, is the short stack. It's okay, Lon. Popeye has his spinach, and now my man has his lucky apple from the Humphreys. You know, actually, Ivy is a champion moocher. He eats all day, and he never reaches into his pocket. <laughs> Ivy may reach here. He's got ace king. Come all in. And he does move all in for about six and a half million. When Phil Ivy's all in. It's casual and cool. Right, let's see how the rest of this final table reacts. Folded to Shulman. He lays it down. Now to Darvin Moon in the big blind. He has an ace. Ace queen. Darvin takes a big swallow. He looks more nervous than Ivy, who has all his chips in the middle. Well, Phil needs a double up, so I don't think he'd mind hearing ace queen come on in. A call. A call from Darvin Moon to put Phil at risk, but Ivy with a better hand and a chance to double through one of the big stacks. Certainly behind Phil Ivey here. Look the apple. <laughs> Darvin's family hoping that it's a rotten apple. Darvin has always said these guys can outplay him, so with all the chips in pre-flop, that might be his best chance against the likes of Phil Ivey. Even if Ivey doubles up, he would still be one of the short stacks, but it would be a move in the right direction. The top poker pros hoping one of their own can hang on. We're all cheering for a king. Well, we know Phil is cheering for a king. <laughs> And I can only assume Darvin is looking for a queen. Yeah, that queen would put a hurt on Phil. Good hand. Good hand. Good luck. Good hand? <laughs> he said good hand. It's a good hand. Better than mine, isn't it? Huh? Oh, yeah. They're pretty friendly foes. I'm sorry, Lon. I have to. Ivy, Ivy, Ivy. <laughs> All right, Ivy at risk with his ace king against the ace queen of Darvin Moon. This entire theater on their feet, anxiously awaiting this flop. Phil Ivey all in. Here's the flop. Oh, and there's a queen! And that sends a dagger through the hopes of Phil Ivey. My goodness. We're gonna need a medic to the broadcast booth. 
Not many are celebrating that queen, but the moon certainly are. How do they put the in right in the window? Like the mouth just read my mind. In 2003, Everyman Chris Moneymaker took out Ivy with Ace Queen. Now, six years later, another Everyman Darwin Moon is poised to take out Ivy with Ace Queen again. All right, the turn card now. Ivy needing help. The tray of clubs is no help. Close. <laughs> he still has a sense of humor. Bill possibly in the middle of his main event demise. He takes it matter-of-factly. If it has to be anyone, I guess I'm glad it's Darwin Moon who's doing the deed. Phil Come Ivey, on, staring elimination right in the face. Ivey needs a king and a king only, or his 2009 main event is over. River card is a five, and that will do it. Phil Ivey eliminated in seventh place from this 2009 main event. Darwin slays Goliath. Everyone in the Penn and Teller Theater standing in salute. Quite a testament to Ivy's almost limitless skills that he was favored by many despite his severe chip disadvantage. Ron, I'm going to need a moment. The mouth again speaks volumes for me. He knew he would have to negotiate pitfalls and traps and bad luck. But the odds were stacked too high against him tonight. Bill Ivey is gone, and the greatest player in the game still has not won the game's greatest event. Phil came to this final table with the desire to be the one. He fell short of the ultimate goal, but proved beyond a reasonable doubt that he is one of the greatest poker players to ever play the game. to the Rio and the final table of the main event where Darvin Moon just took the remainder of Phil Ivey's chips, ending any hope that Ivey's picture will be the next to go up on the wall of champions. Lon, I'm going on the record right now. I am picking Phil Ivey to win the main event in 2010. So with Ivey gone, only six remain. Eric Buckman, the chip leader right now, and that leaves Jeff Shulman as the most accomplished player left, but Shulman with a lot of work to do. The man who knocked out Ivey, Darvin Moon, in third place. Back to action, Steve Beglider under the gun all the way from his home Poker League Championship to one of the last six players in the main event. He's got pocket queens. Beglider's been in a lot of high-pressure business situations. He says he doesn't feel any pressure at this final table. He will put pressure on the rest of the table, though, with a raise to 1.6 million. Eric Buckman, the chip leader, lays it down, as does Kata. Antoine Saud gives way to Jeff Shulman. He says no thanks to the big blind and Darvin Moon. Darvin looks down at Ace Queen again. He just knocked off Ivy with Ace Queen. I'm all in. And he re raises all in. And this would push Steve Beglider all in. Ace Queen is trouble, but Darvin likes the traffic in trouble. Wendy Moon seems worn out from all these tense moments her husband's putting her through. Beglider's got to be feeling a little pressure now. I call. He does make the call all in with his two queens, and he'll find himself ahead, but not out of the woods. Darwin Moon keeps telling us he can't outplay the other guys. He has been in a pre-flop gamble and push mode this entire final table. Steve Beglider asking for help from his troops. A showdown between the two true amateurs left in the main event. Steve Beglider trying to double up through Darwin Moon. Rural Maryland doesn't cheer quite as loudly as the uh, you know, New York big city types. <laughs> All right, here we go to the flop. Beglider at risk. Seven, four, eight. No danger for Beglider in that flop. Now my pulse is up. Darwin doesn't have a pulse. <laughs> Turn card is a trade. No help to Moon. Beglider poised to become a bigger force at this table. Darvin hit a three-outer to topple Ivy. Now looking for another three-outer to topple Beglider. Darvin needs an ace and an ace only to knock out Steve Beglider. And the river card. Oh, it's an ace! Another Darvin Moon special. It's Darvin Moon's world. Everyone else at the main event is just passing through. Beglider knocked out in sixth place just like that. And Darvin Moon back in the chip lead. Beglider played wonderfully at this final table. I was, I was really impressed. You, you, you came from, you really played great. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate it. 
Beglider did play great, like his new buddy Kevin Schaffel. He got it in with the best of it and just got unlucky. There is Schaffel. They both now know what it feels like to come close and fall short. At this point, I don't believe Darwin Moon can ever be drawn dead. Beglider earns almost 1.6 million for sixth place. 20% of that going back to his lucky fellow players at the Newcastle Poker League. Here we go again. It's that unique moment we look forward to each and every year at the main event final table. We get to take in cases home with them. The players can look, but they can't touch. Not yet. A lot of money on the line, so good luck to everyone, though, by the way. $8.5 million is now here in the Penn and Teller Theater. Pass it my way. It is an unbelievable sight, and perhaps a little extra pressure for the five remaining players. The stakes are literally set on the table. I was bummed after Ivy got eliminated, but after looking at that, I am once again stoked. <laughs> Jeff Schulman with pocket jacks. And Schulman putting together a raise. raise. To one and three quarter million. Schulman is playing it very tight, but with that style, you do have to pick up hands once in a while. Fold it around to Joe Cata in the small blind with pocket trays. Cata only 21, but he says he will be crushed if he doesn't win here. Raise in front of him. All in. And all he in. shoves all in. Over 11 million. Well, there's a good chance he's about to be crushed with those pocket threes. Saud gave it up. Jeff asking for a count. Shulman would need almost 10 million to make this call and put Cata at risk. Jeff has picked his spots very carefully. 11. And he needs to chip up. Shulman makes the call and the two short stacks will tangle. The three other players over 50 million chips, these two under 20 million. So both trying to make some noise and chip up. And Joe Cata's youngest ever bid now in dire straits. The Shulman camp likes what they see with the jacks against the trays. Two, four, five to make it interesting? I don't want interesting. That's pretty much my motto in life. How about Jack? How about Jack 3-3? Jack on the turn. I didn't know you could negotiate the board. <laughs> I'm greedy. Me too. <laughs> Shulman's pocket jacks, a four to one favorite to knock out Joe Cata with his pocket trays. And here's the flop. Oh, and there's a tray for Cata to turn the tables on Jeff Shulman. Cata tearing a page out of Darwin Moon's suck out book. And oh look, Coach Hellmuth with a silent pep talk for Jeff Shulman. Jeff facing a crippling defeat here at the hands of young Joe Cata. The kid with a dream is living a fantasy at this final table. Turn card is a seven. No help to Jeff Shulman. Cata still good with his set. And Jack? Jeff pleading with the dealer. Halmuth with no game plan here. I can't watch. I feel like I will cards. Be a man and watch. Yeah, come on. Three, two, Only a river no, jack now will send Joe Cata home. The river card is a queen. Another double up for the 21 year old who's over 23 million now, his high point of the night. The 21 year old is on a roll. His chance to become the youngest main event champion is alive and well. And for Joe Cata, this moment is a dream come true. Poker's been my life for some time now. When I was 17, that was when I knew I was gonna play in the World Series, and that's when I had to wait four years to be able to play in it. When I turned 21, everyone's like, oh, are you excited to turn 21 and go to the bar and stuff like that? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm excited to turn 21 so I can go play in the main event. Time to get the ball rolling. I mean, to be able to finally enter and see the player field, I was pretty excited. <laughs> you play, like, football your whole life, and then you dream to win the Super Bowl. I mean, this is what I can win is like the main event. Joe's 21 years old trying to replace Peter Eastgate as youngest main event champ ever. Yeah, I was on Peter Eastgate's table. I think it was like day three or day four. We were just having conversation and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna beat your record. He said, he's like, yeah, he's like, you can do it. But uh, I mean, we were just both joking around. The record's important, but the real goal is to win it. I mean, I play tournaments for first place. I mean, the bracelet's everything. Lon is a lad. All I wanted to be was an off-divorce sports writer slash poker pundit, and by golly, I did it. So, Joe, you keep reaching for the stars, too. To Darvin Moon now on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam. I love beef jerky. Nine tray of hearts into the muck. Darvin has surprised me today. I thought he would just sit 
back and let the play come to him, but he is taking the play to the rest of the table. Lines are up once again to four and 800,000 with a 100,000 chip ante on Antoine Saoud with ace nine off suit. Saoud, the second Frenchman to make the main event final table. Mark Bouchard finished eighth in 1998. Raised the 5.4 million. That's almost all of Shulman's stack as he looks down at pocket sevens in the big blind. There's a poker axiom. Tight players don't win tournaments. Shulman, like Phil Helmuth, trying to prove that notion wrong. All in. Jeff moves all in, and for 200,000 more, Saoud makes the call. Jeff Shulman at risk. Jeff's mind might flash back to his previous main event final table. Shulman was holding pocket sevens in the head when he was crippled in 2000 by Chris Ferguson. That's a nice looking box. By the way, ESPN.com is reporting that Coach Helmuth will be fired at the end of this main event. Saoud trying to finish off Shulman, who's had a rocky final table. Jeff hoping his sevens will work for him this time. And the flop. 10, 9, 6, Saoud catches a 9 to take the lead. Shulman does pick up the gut right, shot straight draw. The best hand. Eight, 6, 9, 10. Oh, yeah, seven. Seven, 8 or a 7. 7 or 8. 7 or 8. Seven or eight. Yep, this coaching staff really knows the X's and O's. <laughs> Jeff Shulman looks at a queen on the turn. That's no help. His father, Barry, just won the World Series of Poker Europe main event. Jeff was hoping to trump dad at the main event here. But the year of the Shulmans will be over card, if Jeff please. doesn't get a 7 or an 8 on the river. Here is the river card. It is a 4, and that will do it. Antoine Sawu knocks out Jeff Shulman in 5th place. 7th in 2000, 5th in 2009. Final table disappointment twice over for Jeff Shulman. I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. Kudos for Jeff from future ex-coach Helmuth. So it started the day as the second short stack. It's been a steady climb to the top stack. I know, I'm, I'm psyched. For fifth place, Jeff Shulman earns just shy of $2 million. Now the 2009 main event is down to only four players, one of whom will walk out of this Penn and Teller Theater with $8.5 million and that world championship bracelet. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event, final table. Back inside the Rio, the tension is palpable. Eric Buckman, who took the chip lead and a hand against Antoine Saoud while we were away, now has bet enough to put the Frenchman all in. Buckman has ace-queen, Saoud in the lead with ace-king. We know he's ahead, but is he willing to risk his main event here on what he's figuring is likely a coin flip? If he folded here, he'd have plenty of chips left, 35 big blinds. Hi, Carl. Antoine makes the call. You call. Yeah. Okay. Ace King is good. Buckman gets the bad news. Darwin Moon has made Ace Queen work a couple of times today coming from behind. Buckman hopes that that can rub off on him. The top two stacks tangling once again, but this time it's Buckman with a chip lead and a chance to knock off the stubborn French pro. But if Buckman loses this hand, he will be down to just a little more than 20 big blinds. Almost 90 million chips at stake. Buckman with ace-queen trailing the Frenchman's ace-king. And there's a king for Salute! But there's hope for Eric Buckman. He did pick up a straight draw. Buckman, though, never expects to come from behind to win. He says that's what other people do to him. Turn card now is another king for Saud, but it does not change what Eric Buckman needs. Buckman still needs to get very lucky. I'm very, very proud of you. You did very well. It's funny, my father interrupted my second honeymoon with the very same speech. <laughs> Saud still at risk. Buckman very behind and soon to be very short stacked. Saud stands to hold nearly half the chips on the table. Buckman needs a jack to knock off Antoine Saud. The river card is a six. Antoine Saud gets his chips back from Buckman with lots of interest. Yeah. A devastating blow to Eric Buckman. He was such a good boy. Then he started to gamble. Saud is again the chip leader now with almost 90 million. And Eric Buckman has to start from square one and claw his way back into this main event. Antoine Saoud puts France in position to win its first main event bracelet. The Frenchman owns almost half the chips in play. Buckman the short stack, but with Moon and Cata also holding ample chips, nobody is out of this thing. 
Sawit looks down at Queen Deuce and lays it down. Darvin Moon now. King Jack of Diamonds. Darvin says he would be a terrible poker ambassador. I, I disagree. Who doesn't like a poker champion who can run a chainsaw? <laughs> a raise to three million to Eric Buckman. Still stinging from that loss to Antoine. Can't see his hole cards. Eric wondering what Darvin raised with. At this final table, you never know what Darvin has. All in. All in from Buckman for his last 23 and a half million and change. The big blind Joe Cata gets out of the way. So the big re-raise back wow. to Darvin Moon. Let's do it again. Call. Darvin calls with his king jack. Buckman shows ace five. Let's see if I can get a king. Moon in a gambling mood again. He says he knocked out 27 people at the main event before the final table. And Darvin now trying to add another one to the total. Darvin risking about half his stack with that call. Buckman, the chip leader, not too long ago. Now hoping Ooh, Darvin five. doesn't get lucky on him and knock him out. Mama Buckman doesn't need the stress. Eric trying to stay alive and double up at this table. Here's the flop. Deuce nine, queen. Got a gut shot. Moon does pick up a gut shot straight draw. But Eric Buckman still nearly a two to one favorite to double up. Darvin has shown us time and time again he never makes it easy on his opponents. All right, the turn card now. Oh, and there is the king. Even Darvin reacts to that thunderbolt. Buckman now on the edge. Just amazing. Darvin Moon might be the eighth natural wonder of the world. <laughs> Buckman down to his last card. Mama Buckman wishes Eric had gone to dental school. Eric has seen River Miracles at this table. Now he needs one. Buckman needs an ace or he's done. It is a five on the river. And Darvin Moon does it again. What a turn of events for Eric Buckman, the chip leader not too long ago. Now leaving in fourth place with two and a half million dollars. Buckman says all the bad beats he takes deep in tournaments stay with him. This one may never leave him. Eight and a half million dollars and a world championship await one of our three remaining players. Will it be Darvin Moon, Joe Cata, or Antoine Saoud? But for Eric Buckman, it just wasn't meant to be. The World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event, final table. Welcome back to the Penn & Teller Theater at the Rio. We are moving closer to history. Only three players remain in the main event. The chip leader right now, Antoine Saoud, carrying the flag for France. Next is the mild-mannered logger from Maryland, Darvin Moon. And the short stack is the kid at the table, Joe Cata, who can become the youngest champ ever at age 21. Lon, would you mind if I sing Maryland, my Maryland? Yes, I would. Then I won't. <laughs> Darvin Moon from Maryland will fold his 10-8. Joe Cata with pocket deuces in the small blind. From Michigan. I have no ties there. Cata looking to raise it up. He does raise it to a little more than two and a half million. Now Saud in the big blind. And two queens for the Frenchman. If Saud wins, he could ignite a moneymaker type effect in France. By the way, Saoud won a $50 online satellite into the main event. Moneymaker won a $40 satellite in 2003. Saoud with a re-raise to five and three-quarter million. Back to young Joe Cata. Come on. All in. And he moves all in. And this would be for half of Antoine's stack. He wants to take a deep breath and make sure he hasn't run into aces or kings. Carter. Antoine oh. does make the call to Bacata at risk. And an embarrassed Joe Cata shows his deuces, and Cata in big trouble. I'm surprised Joe Cata pushed there, Lon. He had 40 big blinds left and just misread the strength of Saud's hands. Cata has put his fans through the ringer here tonight. If Saud can hang on, he'll own almost 120 million chips. Saud began this hand with 80 million and the chip lead. Cata will have 80 million and the chip lead if he gets lucky. Darvin hoping Cata doesn't get lucky so he can be heads up. There's the flop. Oh! A deuce for Cata. He gets the set. Unbelievable for Joe Cata. He did it 
to Jeff Shulman, and now does it to Saud. You don't want the best hand here. You want the best luck. Wow, Joe Cata now in dominating positions. He's a tray on the turn. He keeps the lead. It seems like Joe Cata should be 100 miles away now with no chips. He keeps coming back and coming back, and now he's about to become the chip leader. Saud now the one looking for a miracle. Darwin thinking heads up, may have to wait. Cata needs to dodge a queen to double up. River card is a six, and yet another big double up for Joe Cata. And with that one comes the chip lead. Saud taking the bad beat quietly. Joe Cata could live to be 121 and never see such good fortune come his way again. Wow, Norman, just when we thought we'd seen it all here at the final table, another incredible moment comes along. And action will begin on 21-year-old Joe Cata. Cata looks down at Ace King, a big hand. Suddenly, Cata has the look of a champion who's been through 12 tough rounds. Raised a two and a half million to Saud now. With the pocket pair, he's got a couple of eights. And Antoine seems a bit more weathered than Joe Cata. Understandable, considering the blow he just took. Arden. Saud moves Arden. all in for his final 46 and a half million. Now to Darvin Moon, who's been such a big participant in so many huge hands, but he'll sit this one out. So the raise back to Joe Cata. Does he want to put more than half his stack at risk with the ace king? Well, he just picked up these chips. Go. Cool. And he will put him to work. Saud at risk, but ahead with the pocket pair. So again ahead of Joe Cata, and he's going to have to win this race to keep his main event alive. For Cata to knock out Saud, he'll have to come from behind again. This is for the tournament. This is for, King. This is for the tournament. Ninety-four million in the pot. Darvin nonchalant. They're not his chips. But at the defining main event moment, whoever wins could be headed to Title Town. Whoever loses could be headed to Palookaville. The respective cheering sections get behind their guys in this huge hand. Cata looking to pair up. You gotta win it. So who knows the best hand guarantees little at this final table. Now the flop, five, four, five, no immediate help for Cata. And that quiets down Catatown. Saud in good shape to double up and retake the chip lead. Well, Saud hoping it stays clean on the turn in the river, and he will have his chip lead back. Turn card is at 10. The pocket eights are still best for Antoine Saud. So now a six to one favorite to double up. A long, grueling main event experience for both these players hinges on this river card. Darvin doesn't look like a guy one card from heads up. And Joe Cata's got to figure his luck's going to run out sooner or later. Cata to knock out Antoine Saoud needs an ace or a king. And now the river card. That did not just happen. Joe Cata did it again. I just saw it. I don't believe it. He played very well. It should be me and you. Antoine Saud out in third place. You deserved it. I'm sorry. The improbable has landed on our front door. The 21-year-old and the logger will be heads up for the world championship. A great run for Francis Antoine Saud, earning him $3.4 million. It has been a final table of unceasing suckouts and endless twists, and it brings us Darvin Moon and Joe Cata. Moon with a hug from his mom. He and Joe guaranteed at least $5 million. <laughs> Wendy Moon sending the good news back home. Au revoir, Antoine, you made your country proud. So when we come back, Joe Cata and Darvin Moon will go heads up for the 2009 World Series of Poker main event bracelet and eight and a half million dollars. The World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. 
Main event, final table. What a scene here inside the Penn & Teller Theater. Good luck, good luck, good luck. And Norman, who could have ever predicted this matchup? It would have been a treat to see my man Phil Ivey go heads up, but to have 21-year-old Joe Cata chasing poker history against the improbable, unimaginable Darwin Moon is just incredible. Darwin's wife and family continue to stand by their man, and the yellow-clad Cata contingent continues to grow. Everyone in this Penn & Teller Theater ready to get this heads up underway and award eight and a half million dollars and that bracelet. The cash looks so sweet. It's money. Darwin knows money doesn't grow on trees. As this heads up gets underway, Joe Cata in dominant position with almost 136 million chips. Darwin Moon starting heads up just about where he started this final table with almost 59 million. The Moon Man needs to get active. In the first hand of heads up, Darvin Moon dealt pocket queens. Darvin has only played heads up a couple of times in his life. Kata considers himself a heads up specialist. He plays almost daily online. Just a call from Darvin for 500,000. Kata with pocket nines. Kata was chip leader at his day one session and now is the chip leader heads up, but so much has happened in between. A raise from Kata to three and a half million and the blood pressure rising here in the theater. Boy, two big pocket pair on the first hand of heads up. This could get real interesting real quick. Moon just calls with his pocket queens for two and a half million. Here's the flop. Trey King Deuce that misses both. Moon's queens are way ahead. Joe first to act. That's three and a half million. Darvin not only has virtually no heads up experience, he's never read a single poker book, but sometimes ignorance is bliss. 10 million now, the raise from Darwin Moon. Darwin not worried by the king. Frankly, I don't think Darwin is worried by anything these days. Back to Joe Cata now. He has to wonder if Darwin has that king. But he'll make the call for six and a half million. So a 27 million chip pot. The turned card is an ace, another over card to both pocket pairs. Yeah, that ace might stop either one in their tracks. Cata does check. Does Darvin Moon know how to slow down? He's reaching for chips. The ace does not slow him down. That's 10 million. Darvin says, I think I'm best. And if I'm not, I should hear from you now, Joe Cata, if you've got a king or an ace. I don't think Joe Cata's going anywhere with his pocket nines, and he does make the call. Joe's mom, and looking very anxious. Well, that call's got to worry Darvin, even if he doesn't worry. All right, we're going to see a river card. It's another king. Darvin Moon with the check mark. Kings and queens. Kata checks again. Check. And Darvin checks. Moon shows his two queens. Kings and queens. I love how Darvin doesn't wait for his opponent to show. He just turns his cards up. And Moon will win that hand with a better two pair a huge pot to kick off this heads up there is so much at stake right now as we take a look at the final table ticker sponsored by fulltiltpoker.net the men listed in the column on the right did win millions at the main event but the champions on the left are forever a part of poker history and will never be forgotten action now on joe Cata. King Jack offsuit. At one point, Kata had 1% of the chips at this final table. He was more likely to scale Mount Everest than to win the main event. Kata raises the two and a half million. Darvin Moon with Queen Eight off. If Darvin wins, he says he might buy his wife a new lawnmower. Ooh. A call from Darvin with his Queen Eight. And here's the flop. Six, five, Jack. Top pair for Joe Kata. Moon missed that flop. You know, I priced some lawnmowers at Sears. Even if he gets her a really nice Craftsman front-propelled rear bag mower, that's only going to set him back $379.99. He said he's got to build the garage to house it, though. Moon checked. Cata bets $3.5 with his jacks. Raise. And a raise announced from Darvin. Aggression comes pretty easily to this guy. He makes it $8.5 million. Now, a riding mower, you're talking four figures, but I don't think he's talking a riding mower. <laughs> So a big test to young Joe Cata here. And he makes the call for $5 million. Yeah, Cata thinks he's ahead. 
Darvin says. Sometimes he bets like hell when he's got it. Sometimes he bets like hell when he doesn't. Moon pairs his queen on the turn to turn this hand upside down, and he checks top pair. Well, Darvin didn't have it. Now he does have it, and he doesn't bet. And Kata checks behind him. Wise check. River card is a deuce. Moon with the check mark again. And he will bet it. It's about one third the pot, seven and a quarter million. I love Darvin's check on the turn. It might get his value bet here paid off. Kata has a pair of jacks. I call. Joe makes the call. Darvin turns over the Good pair point. of queens, and with that pot, Moon is once again the chip leader at the main event. And Kata shows his jack and some frustration. And Darvin Moon suddenly has the momentum heads up. Joe Kata turns around to his supporters as if to say, what do I do with this guy? The logger from Maryland chips away at the young gun Kata and once again has the chip lead. The 2009 World Series of Poker is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And in part by WSOPMobile.com. Get the WSOP Hold'em Legend game for your phone or iPhone. And FullTiltPoker.net. Learn, chat, and play with the pros. The Penn and Teller Theater still packed. We are heads up for the main event championship. Logger, Darvin Moon, and young Joe Cat. Well, we made it longer than I thought we would. I figured you'd have me on the rail by now. Playing well. <laughs> You're playing really well. Thanks. You are too. Darvin is playing well enough to have extended his chip lead. Joe Cata with over 61 million. Darvin with almost 134 million. Cata seems surprised about how tough Darvin has been. Darwin's humble boy routine has him close to a world championship. Action starts on Joe Cata with Jack-9 off. Cata sometimes plays 40 tournaments a day online, but never against Darwin. Darwin's never even played online. Cata with a raise with his Jack-9 to 3 million. Darwin looks down at 8-7 of spades. And he will make the call for 1.8 million more as he tries to put the young Joe Cata away. The flop is 10-5-9. Kata hits a pair of nines. Moon, an up and down straight draw. Darvin checks. Joe checks middle pair. Turn card now is another 10. Kata still ahead. We've seen the same pattern from Joe Kata. I think he keeps trying to get Darvin to be overly aggressive. Darvin's just going to check it. Now Joe, will he bet it this time? And he does. Three million. He sat on his hand on the flop, decides to pull the trigger here. Darvin, giving this some thought. I'm all in. Moves all in. That's enough to put Kata all in. Wow. Kata says Darvin plays ABC poker. Darvin reaching deeper into the alphabet here, asking Joe Kata if he's willing to risk his main event right now. If I'm Joe Cata, I'd have a hard time believing Darvin has a 10 in his hand making that raise. But then again, this is for everything. I call. Cata makes the call. What a read by the young gun. And this puts Joe Cata in position to retake control of this matchup. With just middle pair, Joe Cata makes the tough call, and what a call it was. Darvin Boone's over-aggressive play may be handing the reins back to Joe Cata, but if Boone can hit the river, he will be the most unlikely world champion ever. We have seen both of these players catch cards at this final table. Right now, Joe Cata needs to dodge danger to survive. Darvin's still got seven outs to complete his improbable journey. With a jack or a six on the river, Darvin Moon will be the main event champion. The river card is a tray. Joe Cata doubles up. Joe Cata with the call of his life. And Cata sits Darvin Moon back down and regains control of this heads up match. So the tables are turned on this heads-up match again. Darvin Moon, the shorter stack. Joe Cata in charge. It's good bluff, though. It was good semi bluff. Good call, Joe. Good it's call. Good play. Honestly, it was playing awesome. It's fun. It's fun for me. 
I'm learning so much off you. Like I play heads up all the time. You're by far like a really like tough opponent. Yeah. Quite a bit of respect being shown between these two last men standing. Lon, it's been a final table. I don't want to see end. It has been scintillating. Every hand has the whole crowd on the edge of their seats. The World Championship bracelet and eight and a half million dollars up for grabs. Action starts on Joe Cata. Joe with pocket nines. Cata was a moneymaker baby boomer. He, he started playing online in his teens after watching Chris Moneymaker's main event win. And a standard raise now to three million. Darvin Moon, queen jack of diamonds. And Moon. Looks like he's going to raise it up. He will make it eight million to stick around. Darvin consistent at this entire final table in his aggression. Joe needs five to call. Mullen. Now Kata is the aggressor trying to put Darvin Moon all in. And now it's Darvin's moment of truth. Is he willing to risk it all here? Call. And Darvin makes the call with his suited Queen Jack. Wow, Darvin plays by different rules, and he makes that all-in call for 64 million. So here we go, Joe Cata on the precipice of becoming the youngest world champion ever. Phil Hellmuth's record as youngest main event champ stood for 19 years. Peter Eastgate's record could be wiped out in one. And here is the flop. Eight, two, seven. That is a good flop for Joe Cannon. Darvin takes it in stoically. Cata can't look. Relax. I'm relaxed. That chant has gotten Cata through so many difficult moments. And now the turn card. It's a king that's the only paint Darvin doesn't have. Champion of the world. On day three, Kata jokingly told Peter Eastgate he would break his record. Now he's one card away from doing it. Darvin Moon needs a queen or a oh jack, God. or Joe Kata will oh be the God. main event champ. And that seven will end it. Joe Kata rewrites poker history, becoming the youngest main event champ ever. You played a hell of a match. Good in. You played a hell of a match. Seriously, all the props in the world. He's a kid with a dream come true. 21 years, 11 months, 21 days old. So many times Joe was almost out of here, but each time managed to survive. An overwhelming moment for Joe's mom and for young Joe himself. You win some, you lose some. Darvin Moon, unlikely, unexpected, and until the end, unstoppable. Oh, yeah. It's the kid is now officially the comeback kid. 6,494 players started the 2009 main event with one goal. World Series, baby! Become world champion. All you need is a ticket and a dream. Hand by hand, nine men separated themselves from the masses and stepped onto poker's biggest stage. And after one of the most explosive, dramatic, Thrilling main event final tables in history. There is now only one. Let's give it up for Joe Cata. Down to nearly nothing. Cata battled back time. After time. After time. And when reality set in, the 21-year-old made poker history by becoming the youngest ever to win the main event. I'd like to thank all my fans for coming out and supporting. Youth has been served once again at the main event. Congratulations to Joe Cata, our 2009 main event champion. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. We'll see you next year at the World Series of Poker.